Without further ado, except to say, remember, this is just the beginning, I give you Governor Raimondo. Thank you, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. It's charitable of you to call it a helping hand. It was often a crack of the whip, but it worked. Uh, Joe has been tremendous as a volunteer working tirelessly, and I have to thank you. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without you. Um, there are, this is an incredible turnout, and I hope that our tenants, CIC and J&J &J and Brown, recognize that this is what you get when you do business in Rhode Island. The entire community turns out, and we're going to stay behind you to make sure that you are successful. I want to take a second to, there's too many people here uh, who were helpful in making this happen um, f for me to name everyone, but there's a handful of people I have to take a second to acknowledge. Uh, beginning with the legislative leadership, the Speaker Mattiello and Senate President Ruggiero, who's been involved in this from the get-go. I don't think there's a time I see Donnie in the hallways that he doesn't say, hey, Gov, how are we doing? 195, let's get people to work. Let's make it happen. So thank you both uh, for being a partner to me in making this happen. It's a day for all of us to be proud on what we can do when we work together. Uh, our entire federal delegation is here only in Rhode Island. You guys are amazing, you're incredibly busy, and I want to say thank you, Senator Reed, White House, Congressman Cicilline, and Langevin. Every single one of these guys has helped uh, behind the scenes in ways that are invisible, but uh, have been incredibly helpful. So thank you for your deep commitment to Rhode Island. Secretary of State, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for being here. Uh, representative of the mayor's office and various uh, colleagues of mine in the General Assembly. I also have to recognize President Paxson of Brown, who is deeply committed to Rhode Island and our economy and has been an incredible partner. Thank you, Chris and Tim Rowe for believing in Rhode Island and Jim Barron's. Thanks for hanging in there, man. These calls have not always been easy, uh, but you did it and we put this thing over the finish line. And as Joe said, uh, it's the beginning. Um, you all know that for too many years, this is what we've seen on the 195 land. A lot of you are nodding. This is what we've seen, grass, tumbleweeds, dirt. And we've always said the hardest projects would be the first one or two. You know, the first project was uh, Johnson & Wales Innovation Center, which is just down the road, which is gorgeous. Uh, and this is the one that will, will be here when it's completed is a transformational project for Rhode Island. It's a couple hundred thousand square feet with globally top tier tenants in Cambridge Innovation Center and J&J &J and Brown University. And it is a symbol to the rest of the world that Rhode Island has momentum in this 21st century innovation economy. And it is, as Joe said, the beginning. We've seen firsthand from uh, what we've seen in Cambridge and St. Louis and other places what the Cambridge Innovation Center can do in a city and in a region. And we've seen in many places what a uh, top tier university can do when they work in partnership with industry. That's what is driving the economy of the future. That's what's driving Boston's economy and t other economies. And that's what needs to continue to drive this economy. And Rhode Island has everything that it's going to take to be successful in that 21st century economy. We have everything it takes, quality of life, universities, uh, legislative and congressional leaders who care, amazing talent. It's, we've got it all. And a few key projects, like this one, will be catalytic in moving the state forward to the 21st century economy and underpinning that economy. Just look around. You've got, you know, the Jewelry District, which is coming alive. You have the amazing Nursing Center, which is coming alive and going to be bustling with activity. Brown's Medical School, bustling with activity. Lifespan. GE Digital down the road. Before our eyes, it's happening. One of the things I love about this project is it's going to create jobs at every level. It's going to create nearly a thousand jobs just building it. I see a few guys with hard hats and vests around here. You're going to be very busy for the next couple of years. And it's going to be good work and you're going to make us proud. You can clap, right? It's okay. Because you know, a couple of years ago, the unemployment rate in the building trades was in the teens. 
We talked to these guys. They were losing their houses. They were out of work for a year at a time. The Senate President knows that too. 17, 18, 19 percent unemployment rate. So for the next two years, you're going to be hard at work here, almost a thousand jobs. And then when we're in the facility, there's going to be jobs from lab technicians, assistants, folks to clean the buildings, assistants, all the way up to PhD engineers, executives, and every level of entrepreneur in between. And that's what we're trying to do here. Stefan said, you know, once upon a time we had Bulova and Spidell and and the world's changed, you know? We're even you know, we're seeing it every day. The world's changing. And it's our job to get Rhode Island ready for those changes. We can't stop the economy from changing but we can make sure that every Rhode Islander has a shot to be successful in this new economy. And today's proof that together we're going to do that. So for every one of you that has helped make this happen, I want to say thank you. And, and Joe's right. Let's get on to that next pickle and keep this going. Thank you.